Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be talking about the correct way to use a tap and die set to fix holes that are stripped out as well as bolts that either have bad threads or may have been misthreaded. So let's start with the basics. This is a tap and die set from Harbor Freight. It has standard taps from inch taps as well as metric taps. So in the set you get taps and you get dies. Here's an example of what a die is going to look like. Sometimes they'll be circular, sometimes they'll look like a hex. This is something that you'd be using to fix a bolt or to fix a threaded rod. And then you have taps here. So there's a few different styles that we're going to look at. There's the bottoming taps, there's the plug style taps, and then there's the taper taps. Each one of them has different uses. So when you're looking at taper taps, those will have the first seven to 10-ish threads at the tip ground flatter to kind of help you start it in the hole. They could use bees to start a thread in a blind hole or to finish and cut all the ways, cut all the threads in a through hole. Bottoming taps have no ground threads, kind of where it starts, and it's generally used when you're putting it into a blind hole where it's not a through hole and you're actually coming down to the bottom of the hole itself and you could make contact. Cutting fluid is incredibly important for cutting new threads as well as maintaining old threads to make sure that the tap moves smoothly through. The last essential piece which I like to use is uh, something that looks like this. So right here this is this is a device that lets that you can hang off your toolbox that lets you see exactly what thread is your bolt is using. So each one of these is going to be labeled with a different bolt size. So this one says M10-1.5. So that's a metric 10 bolt size. And you can use this to double check what you're doing before you tap any holes. The last item that we're going to talk about is a drill and tap chart. Now this becomes incredibly important to know what drill size you're going to be using before you tap the hole. So make sure that you reference this chart before you drill any holes for your taps. All right, to demonstrate how we're going to cut into this, I have a block of aluminum here. We're going to use a quarter 20 tap, but before we do that, we're gonna drill a hole in the block. When we're doing this, I think that it's important to call out again here. You wanna get this hole as square as possible. So if you have a drill press, that's what you wanna use. And while you're doing this, you're not using a quarter inch drill bit. This is a 13 64ths bit. Now that we have this in place, we're gonna take the quarter 20 tap and we're gonna put it inside of our handle. So now with the handle in place, we can go ahead and start tapping. But before you go ahead, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that this is plenty lubed up so that you don't have any issues kind of binding. It's incredibly important as we start here to start as straight as possible with the hole to make sure that we capture it and we move down. Okay, so you can see it's starting to catch. Um, it's a tapered bit, so it's good for starting holes. You know, you go, what I like to do is I like to go until it gets a little rough, then I turn back a half, quarter turn. So you, you go back forward a little bit, you get a lot of chips built up, and then you go back a little bit. You go forward, you will add a little bit more oil, then we'll go back a bit, break up the chips. And then you continue this process throughout. So you keep moving forward and back to break up the chips. And you'll notice that it's going a little bit more every single time. Every once in a while, I like to take it out and just clean up the tap. You can see all the metal chips and metal shavings. You know, a, a Brass brush does well cleaning it. Also, a pad like that. So we're gonna take our brush, and I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna clean it off. Not brush it into the hole. And then we're gonna put it back in place. And as you start moving, you'll notice that it's mostly threaded from where you were before, and you can just continue on. Now this is aluminum, so it's gonna cut pretty easy, and you can see the threads that have been formed by using the tap. Now we're gonna take a quarter 20 screw and we're gonna try it in the hole. All right, so next we're gonna talk about using dies. 
the die that we have, we're going to use to fix a bolt that was given to me by a manufacturer that I needed for my ski do or for my snowmobile. And it came not threaded, as you can see right here. So with that becoming not threaded, you know, it, it wasn't usable. It was, I made a decision just to go out and buy another one. One of the things I could have done is I could have used a die on this and I could have actually fixed it so that I didn't have to go out and buy another one. So we're gonna walk through using a die here. So using a die, there's two different sides that you're gonna use. One side's gonna have the numbers and which is, you're gonna see on this one, it's gonna be an M10. And then it's gonna say the pitch of the threads. If it's a metric, you could say like 1.25. If it's inch size, you're gonna say like 20 threads per inch. What you're gonna notice is you're, prob you're typically gonna have one side of a die that's flat, and then you're gonna have one side that's tapered. The tapered end will make it easier for you to get the bolt started and to keep it straight. For this, I'm gonna take the M10 die, and I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna put it inside this handle here, and we're gonna start fixing the threads in this bolt. So to get this tap and die in, you know, this one's rounded. You have some that can fit in a socket that are easy to use. Uh, this one's specifically rounded and it goes with this handle here. There's three holes in it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these three screws, we're gonna line it up and then put it in place. All right, now that we have this in place, we can start the process. So the tapered side is facing down. I'm gonna first put some oil on it so that I can lubricate this up just to make sure that it's gonna move freely. Okay, tapered side down. So you try to get it as straight as possible as you start pushing down. So I like to push down lightly as I turn. And see we're moving. We're going pretty much flat with it. Okay, we're gonna turn back a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go back again. And you can see it's the same general process that we've done before, going back and forth. All right, now looking at this bolt, you can see we're fully tapped as a metric 10 with a one pitch on it. So this is fully tapped. Now let's go ahead and try both of these in the garage and we'll check the, both the tapped block and this bolt to see, to make sure that they were threaded correctly. All right, now that we have both all set, we're gonna go ahead and see how well it fits. So we're gonna take the tool that we had earlier. You can use a bolt for this as well if you have the right bolt size. And we're gonna take the M10 screw we're gonna find the M10 1.0 and then we're gonna screw it in. It screws in nice because your threads are clean. It's never been used before. It's not pulling out. So we know the M10 is good. Next, we're gonna check the block and we're gonna use a quarter 20 to check it. So quarter 28, quarter 20. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on and then screw in to see how it works. And you can see goes on nice and smoothly. So it's as simple as that. You know, these sets come in extremely useful kind of when you least expect them. I always like having a good tap set on hand. You know, if you can always try to get two of each tap of the ones that you use most common. And the reason for that is because sometimes they do break. So if they break, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have another one on hand so you're just not stuck waiting to go to the store and get a new one. Thanks for tuning in to the Ants Garage. Hope you learned something. Till next time.